Hello dragons, and welcome back to today's video. So I'm starting off with two dolls here. I have a Cleo doll, and I have a Dracula doll here. These are Gen 1 dolls that I bought off of eBay, but I only just want uh, a Dracula head for this project. The Cleo doll is for another project, I was just recording them at the same time. Anyways, so um, I went ahead and removed the hair on both of the dolls, and then once uh, the hair is removed, I dunked them into water and removed the head from the body, but I did it off, off camera. I worked on the Gen 3 doll. I don't know her name. I know she's from the Monster High series, I, and, I, and I also know she's a cat, but other than that, I don't know her name. So, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I don't know the Monster High story. Anyway, so I cut off her hair, just like I did with the Gen 1 dolls, and dunk her into a body of water. And then I remove her head off camera, apparently. Then I removed the factory paint off the Dracula head and just placed it onto the new body. I used the cat doll head for another project I'm using, which you probably won't be seeing for a while. Anyway, so once that is all done, it is time to move on to the part that I hate the most. What's worse than removing movie hair plug from dolls? Well, that's Sandy. I used to like Sandy. Till I found out how dirty it can get, so I hate it now. But I needed to get it done because there were things on this doll that weren't working with this project. I even removed the tail off of this doll because I'm going to be making a brand new doll. I think that's what, one of the reasons why I bought this doll is because I wanted to use the tail. But realizing that the tail wasn't going to work, I just remove it because... Reason. Anyways... I got rid of the panty mold on this doll, including factory stuff that came along with it, and a few other seam line on this doll. I even got rid of the fur texture on this doll, uh, on the leg of this doll, which will come bite me in the ass later. The sandy part, not the fur part. Once the sandy part was done, finally! I put in the wire within the head of the doll. I put the wire in the spot where the ears were going to be, and then on top of the head, and even on the forehead. Didn't know this would be a foreshadowing in the future. With the wire we'll put in place, I glued them down, I grab out a pocket scope and got to work. I sculpted in the horns and the ears and everything else that I needed. Once that was done, I let them all set and I sprayed her down off camera with the with this bright purple color. Done and ready, I was actually getting ready to blush her. However, I did not like how things were going. I stared down at her for a very long time off camera, and I just kept staring her down, even on camera, and I made the ultimate choice. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what I decided to remove all the hard work I worked on her face, her ears. I just removed everything. And this would be sad. Sad. This didn't take me long to do, and I had a lot of fun removing all of this. Well, for the most part. Now that everything is clean, and and I have a clean start, it's time to put everything back together. But, but first, the wire. I'll just skip this part for ya. There we go. Hold on a second. We need one more thing to add on to this head. There we go. Better. That look a lot better. Alright, let's grab out the ear boxes and add that back onto the horns. But this time, not the ears. Because I have a different idea of what I want to do with those ears. But I've forgotten something. There's something I need to do before I finish sculpting this head. Oh yeah! Forgotten to put the head back onto the doll. Whoopsie. But it's okay. I'm done anyways. So, uh, there's not a whole lot of t for me to worry about. Also say goodbye to those teeth because they're not staying. Huh, that was weird. Sorry about that. My camera just glitched, and I have no idea what happened. But everything seemed fine, so let's just get back with the doll. Anyway, the time to put her in the burrito after I sprayed her down with a brand new purple paint color. And once I sprayed her down with Mr. Super Clear, it was time for the blushing on her face. Let's get started! No, no, oh wait, before we get to the uh, blushing, I need to do the painting first. And I need to paint her horns a pink color. After painting her horns, it's time for some blushing. This took me a while to figure out, th figure out because, well, this is my third time blushing a doll face. Well, my first blush had been recorded, but you won't be seeing that for a while. And the other blush was done off camera, so yeah. Anyway, I started off with blushing the corner of the head of the purple color. Then move on to the magenta color for the face as well. 
I did a lot of the face up off camera because at the time of recording this part of the video, my back was really hurting so I wasn't able to record in front of the camera, but I did try to record in front of the camera as much as possible. For eyes, I used a pink watercolor pencil to fill in her eyes. Not white, pink. To the reason. And I want to apologize for this part. Like I mentioned before, I had a hard time recording due to my back. I'm feeling a lot better now and hopefully future video will have a little bit more face up in the future. I struggle with the eyes a lot, not only with the pastels but pencils as well, but I was also having trouble with how I wanted the eyes to look. They turned out okay in the end, and I kind of wish I fixed the how I sent her the pupil, but you can barely see the pupil, so I guess I'm not too mad about it. It's only if you squint so close to her face, you can see the uh, mix up on her pupil. Anyways, I move on to the body to work on this time around. I was able to record a lot of the body blushing, so here we go. While this part of the video is going on, I wanted to talk about the reason why this video took me so long to work on. So if you guys have seen my last video, which was last month by the way, I wanted to uh, go down to a bi-weekly uploading schedule, meaning that I would skip a week before uploading again. But it didn't work as I planned because the project took me forever to finish. Wait, did I change my uploading time on my YouTube channel? Wait, I, gotta, I need to see this. Oh, uh, <laughs> I need to change that. Oh wait, did I finish up the painting part of this video? Good, now time for the blushing part. I took the time to blush the body with green, purple, and pink. I even removed the thing that was protecting her head because I didn't want it there anymore. And, and it was also getting in my way anyway, so. <laughs> I do have to say that the blushing part took me for freaking forever to do on her body. Uh, painting was fine, the blushing took a while, but uh, it wasn't that bad actually. I would rather do the than, well, try to figure out spray painting than, oh, figure out blushing. This is a really unnecessary part for me. I can see why people, a lot of people don't really blush the body, but for me, I like it. I think it's uh, fantastic. Now that the body is finally done with being blushed, it's time to move on to the ears of the character. Did you think I've forgotten about those? Did you? Did you? Uh huh huh. I did it. So let's get to putting on some paper towel onto them and slab on some latex on top of it. You heard me, latex. I mixed some paint with a lace deck to get a pretty cool color with it, I guess. But you're probably wondering how I did this. Well, I'll show you. First, let's grab a wire, then wrap it around with paper tape. I found the technique online with someone doing this technique with tape and wire for postable hand. I'll put the name of the channel that I saw here on screen. Basically, they just added tape, mod podge around the wire to make postable hand. That's what they did. But I'm adding a few steps to it too. After adding the tape onto the wire and adding two layers of the Mod Podge because it actually keeps the tape down, it's time to add paper towels on top of the um tape at a tail, I guess, and add latex on top of it. Now I know there are people out there who are allergic to latex, and I'm trying to figure out a different way to do this without latex. I don't have the technique now. When I do, I'll show you guys, but until then, I'm using the latex method. Latex is not that expensive, you can find it pretty cheaply on Amazon. But again, I will find a different way to use a different method without latex. But, um, anyways, once the ears are done, and also the tail, I decided to blush both of them. I should have sprayed on Mr. Super Clay on both the tail and the ears, because the pastel just came off the tail and ear after a while. What a disappointment. It was like, it didn't rub off the first time after like messing around with the ears, but after a while, the pastel did come off the ears and the tail. I don't I think the next time if I ever do something like this, I will just spray Mr. Super Clear on top of the tail and the ears. It didn't mess with the latex, thankfully, but it was a bit of a disappointment that all the pastel and all my hard work just disappear after a while. So yeah, I will be using Mr. Super Clear next time, or MSE if you want to call it that. After the realization that the pastel would never remain on the ears and tail forever, I decided to glue down the hair wrap on top of the head. And this out of everything in this entire project took me forever to do. No, seriously. I would rather work on the face up rather than the hair because this took me freaking forever to do. Not only do I have to glue the hair down onto her head, but I had to create extension for the back of her head as well. You see, using yarn is great, but they aren't, you can't make long hair with the yarn because of how the yarn is made. I know it's weird. So, in order to make that big fluffy hair that I wanted, I have to use extension, like three extension, in order to create that long flowing hair that I wanted. It, it gave me what I wanted, it just took freaking forever to do. 
I would try to do it for the front as well, but it would have looked too poofy and wouldn't look right, so I didn't do it. You could thank me later for that. Anyways, uh, so yeah, this took me an eternity, uh, yeah. So, after gluing on the last piece of the hair, I decided to leave it to dry and do her clothes. Like, not much of clothing that she's wearing, but I wanted to give her some clothes. I actually at first didn't want to make her clothes, but um, I decided after a while and I thought, I'll just give her clothes. So I tried to craft some uh, armor pieces onto her with the, like foam that I found at Myers, but uh, after many attempts it didn't work. <laughs> so I just found this ribbon that I had that I got from Maya as well and just cut some pieces out and see what I can do. But I was trying to figure out how I was going to make it look nice on her, and so I took a break from that and decided to work on her tail. What do you mean tail? Had a tail. Well, I need to glue some hair off onto her tail as well. Yes, hair on her tail. That makes sense. You see, I want oh uh, in her original drawing she had like a uh, fluffiness on her tail, so I wanted to recreate that. So I'm just glu gluing down some hair onto her tail, which was easier than it done. This was actually really easy to do. Just grab like a scrunch of uh, hair wrap that you made and just glue it on top of her tail. And this didn't take me long, it took me like two days to do. Once uh, uh, act just um, before you actually like trim it and brush it out, I would just wait a couple of days before the glue dry. And yeah, I probably should have just used fabric glue uh, on her tail, but the glue that I was using was actually fine, so I just used with the glue that I was using for her hair. And, and I could still pose her uh, tail, and it's still perfectly fine. The only problem is I kind of wish I just hid some of the um, glue part. Oh well, maybe next time. And once I let the uh, glue dry, I trimmed the hair down and the tail is it's done. Now it's time for me to work on her top. And after uh, thinking about it, after working on her um, tail, I figured out how I wanted her outfit to look. And this was the scary part. Um, I did a lot of the trim line on the um, ribbon off camera. It took a, a couple of times to figure out how I wanted to work with it because I have never uh, used flame next to a ribbon before to trim the seam lines before, but I got the hang of it. Wish I could show you on camera, but I didn't. But I glued down her bottom piece onto her, glued them like strings around her back, and then I did the top piece for her chest. A uh, choker, which I actually didn't want her choker to be that big, but um, too late now. I actually am slowly but surely going to like her choker and how big it is, especially. I'm <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I'm slowly but surely liking her um, choker that I put on her, especially with uh, the gemstone that I added on later. The gemstone that I actually found at Maya as well. And once I added like the strings to connect the bra that I gave her, uh, that I put on her uh, uh, chest, I, I just grew a string around her neck and all that stuff to um, connect the bra to her, to make it look connection connected. And then I glued them gemstone onto um, the piece as well to make everything come together. And with all that detail done, she is finally done.
Hanifa. I love how she turned out. I'm so happy that I finally finished her and I hope you guys love her too. I'll be posting her on my Instagram and Tumblr so follow me there. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on my next project and hit like if you like this video and I'll, and I'll see you dragons all next month. Unless I decide to finish another project for this month. Probably not. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with a bi-weekly uh, schedule. It's gonna be a monthly schedule. So yeah, I gotta change that on my YouTube channel. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. Bye dragons!